Hello and welcome back to University of Montana Geo 572 Advanced Hydrogeology. Today we're going to be talking more about ModFlow and FlowPy and transitioning our conceptual model to numerical models. And today mostly we're going to be just getting comfortable, a little more comfortable with the principles of ModFlow and FlowPy. Um, and thinking about how we make the transition from conceptual models to numerical models. So to begin with, I want to uh, just recall and remember a few things about ModFlow and FlowPy. So, Recall. Um, mod flow is a Fortran executable. All right, it's written by the USGS and it's a finite difference groundwater simulator. All right. So ModFlow is a program, it's written in Fortran, it's a finite difference groundwater simulator. All right, FlowPy, all right, is Python. All right, and it's a library. And it, Python or FlowPy, is this Python library that's designed for creating input files needed by ModFlow be easily uh, easy commands to run ModFlow. So run mod flow externally. All right, and what, what I want you to remember here is when it calls mod flow, it's calling this external uh, program, Fortran program that runs independent of Python. All right, it's not running in Python, it's running outside. You could run mod flow using the input files you created in FlowPy externally from your command prompt, all right? Okay, so it runs mo mod flow. Mod flow takes the input files that FlowPy has created, runs, and creates its own set of output files, all right? And so FlowPy also has uh, capabilities to post process. mod flow output so that you can make plots and calculations all right so it takes mod flow output and allows us to read it back into python and make plots with python and calculations with python okay so mod flow totally external to the Python library FlowPy that we're using to interact with ModFlow. Two parts, all right? All right, so now we've talked a lot about conceptual models. Our job now is try to move the conceptual model to the numerical model and into, do, um, into our numerical implementation. So we need to tell ModFlow what the ingredients for the boundary value problem are that we developed from our conceptual model. 
all right, and we've hit these hard. I want you uh, to recall that the boundary value problem ingredients that we need to give mod flow We need to export to ModFlow in a way that ModFlow can understand. All right, so the first one is, well, we need a domain of interest. Oh. Domain of interest, and this is really, um, for the numerical model, we also need discretization. All right, we need to break it up into little bits. And this is of space and time. All right, so recall from our finite differences, we had to discretize our domain into space and time. So that's what we need. We need our first ingredient, domain of interest, and for the finite difference solution, we need discretization of space and time. All right, we need the governing equation. Go, go, just rewrite it. Governing equation. All right. And this also changes. So the important processes that we need to consider. An example is, you know, do we have recharge or not? As an example. Okay. Uh, boundary and initial conditions, DC and IC, and we're going to have another sources and sinks. So sources and sinks into or out of our domain. And then finally, we need the parameter. parameters of interest, all right? So remember, all of these ingredients come from our conceptual model. These come from our conceptual model, and now we need to tell ModFlow how to, how to implement them. Okay, so let's just talk about some, before we, Get into the details, I think it's important to understand some basic mod flow concepts that allow us to uh, more easily um, and these are specific, I'm going to say to the layer flow package layer flow package. All right, so some concepts that we're gonna use for the layer flow package specifically. First of all, the way ModFlow kind of thinks about the world is that the world is made up into a series of long, thin aquifers and aquitards. All right, so we got long, thin aquifers and aquitards. Each one is long and thin enough 
that it is going to be represented by one layer of cells. So long, thin aquifers and confining units. One cell thick. All right, and remember, this is, these are columns and these are rows of cells. Uh, sorry, we're looking, these are layers. Never mind, disregard what I said, these are layers. And if we're looking in cross section here, these layers, these are columns. And uh, these columns have a spacing del C. Okay. Um, next thing. So we need to apply boundaries. on lateral edges. All right, all lateral edges of our system and the top and bottom. All right, and the default boundary is always no flow. So if we don't want it to be no flow, then we're gonna to have to tell it another boundary condition type. All right, wells are sources and sinks in a single cell. And we can think about that as, for example, a well that's screened across this entire aquifer, all right? And only in this aquifer. Doesn't have screen in either aquitard below or above. Uh, the other thing is this source and sink applies to the whole cell. It's not a point within a cell, it applies to the whole cell. Okay. Recharge is a boundary condition. a flux boundary condition at the top of the domain. All right, so it is an aerial recharge. It's coming down from the top. Um, All right, so recharge always occurs at the top of a cell. Um, all right, so another important mod flow thing is that boundary conditions and sources and sinks, all right, boundary conditions and sources and sinks are constant for a stress period. All right, so the world, according to mod flow, is broken up into stress periods. Those stress periods are defined as a time where the boundary conditions are constant. 
and the sources and sinks. If they change, so if a boundary condition or source sync changes, we have to define a new stress period. All right, so if the rate at which we're pumping a well changes in mod flow, you have to have a new stress period, all right? And you define the new pumping rate for that stress period. Um, each stress period is broken up into time steps. All right, so you have multiple time steps per stress period. Minimum of one time step per stress period, but likely many time steps in a single stress period. Okay, so the other thing. Uh, our governing equation, I'm just gonna write an example, GE might be something like this, dh dt ss dh dt is equal to d squared k d squared h dy squared plus k d squared h dx squared, all right? The variable here is head, all right? So the solution to this governing equation is head as a function of space and time, all right? The solution is something that is a tells us the head at x, y, and t, all right? So the main output for mod flow is the head at the head in space and time. So if we wanna know flow, we have two options. One, we can calculate Flow, if I know head and I know permeability, I calculate flow, how do I do it? From Darcy's law, right? Or I can have mod flow keep track of flow and that's called the cell budget file, all right? And then I tell mod flow to write out the cell budget for each cell, all right? Lots of output might not want to do that. So a lot of times we're just going to output the head field and we can calculate flow using Darcy's law. Okay, another key aspect of mod flow. Mod flow, a mod flow simulation is created by adding a series of packages. All right, and these packages are the way that we define the ingredients of the BVP. So packages define the ingredients
of the boundary value problem. All right. And they give mod flow specific instructions. for output and method of solution. All right, so we're gonna string each, each mod flow simulation, we're gonna string together a series of packages that we need to turn our, to take our conceptual model, turn it into the ingredients for the boundary value problem for mod flow, give it the instructions we want. And each, um, not all simulations will use the same packages. So each series of packages is tailored um, to add the things we need from our conceptual model. So not all packages are used in a simulate. Uh, not all packages, are used for a given simulation. And for each simulation, you're not gonna use the same packages. Okay, so let's use our, let's use our, um, green swamp problem and think about these packages that we're going to use. So um, let's add a page here and let's talk about the green swamp problem from Anderson and Listener. All right. And remember, this problem looks something like this. We had a river up here. We had the Slate Mountains on one side, Slate Mountains on the other. And then at the down on this side, we had the Green Swamp. All right, and here's the river. And if we were to look sort of along a profile here from A to A prime, right? Oh, let's add some dimensions here. This was 10,000 meters, 10 kilometers, and this was 4,500 meters. And we got a well that we're gonna put here. That's 1,500 meters. 2,250. 2,250. What else? All right, so if I look from A to A prime, so this is map, cross section. So 980 meters. Um, our land surface did something like this. Uh, this was 1020, this is 1000, and the water level here is 1000, and the water level here is 1000, and this is green swamp. All right, and then we had constant recharge. Of uh, a millimeter a day. Um, 
the hydraulic conductivity here was 50 meters per day. Okay, I think we got most of what we need. Um, so let's think about what packages we're going to use to turn this conceptual model into a numerical model. So our mod flow packages that we need to define. All right, and use. Okay, so <clears throat> the first thing we're gonna do is domain and discretization. Okay, so that package is called the discretization package. And this is domain and discretize it, discretize, discretization, all right? So this is the first package we're gonna do. And that's just, you know, take our, take our system, turn it into a series of aquifers and aquitars, tell it what size they are and how big this, the cells are. And we need to discretize the domain and discretize space. and time, all right? So we're gonna discretize space and time here. All right, the second thing. The second package we're gonna use is the basic package. All right, and this is, you can think about this as our first boundary condition step, all right? and our initial condition. All right, so here, this is domain and discretization. Second is first set of BCs. This is constant head BCs or no flow BCs. Um, so, and then the initial conditions, the initial head. All right, so <clears throat> the next package we're gonna use is the layer property flow. LPF. And really what the LPF does is say, okay, mod flow, we're gonna think of the world as these series of layers of thin aquifers and confining units. And we're going to define properties for each layer. And so you can think about this as sort of telling it the kind of, it tells it a little bit about the PDE and it tells it about parameterization. All right. So this is the PDE. How are we going to think about? The aquifer, but most importantly, how are we going to parameterize it? All right. And here we're going to tell it about the type of aquifer. All right. And when we do that, we're going to tell it the PDE to solve. Okay. So layer packety flow, PDE, parameterization. Uh, for well package, all right? We're gonna have a well, so we need to use the well package, all right? Um, you can think about this as setting up the source sink, all right? And so this affects the PDE. It affects the PDE and sort of the, the uh, boundary conditions. All right, we're gonna use the recharge, we have recharge. So we're gonna use the recharge package. All 
All right, and this is the second boundary condition step. And this is for a specific boundary condition, and that's recharge. All right, so it actually also affects the, that doesn't really affect the boundary or the partial differential equation, but it does add our constant flux boundary condition or our specified flux. All right, the other one we're gonna use is output control. All right, and this will be how often and what do we write? And what do we write to file? All right, and this is really, this is instructions for ModFlow. All right, this is not really part of our uh, conceptual model. This is just instructions for ModFlow to tell them or to tell ModFlow the model when to out output. Now we're going to construct our output control knowing, you know, what the problem is we want to solve. Okay, and then also we're going to use this the uh, a solver package. Um, we're going to use the precondition conjugate gradient package. Conjugate gradient. Package PCG. And this is solver. All right. Remember solver for H equals to A inverse H T plus one equals to H inverse T. All right. So this tells me something about this A inverse. And uh and again, this is instructions for mod flow and the solution method. Okay, so here's what we're gonna, these are the packages we're gonna use. Um, this is how we're gonna take all the parts of our conceptual model, all the ingredients for our BVP and implement them numerically in ModFlow. So in class on Tuesday, we will start working methodically through this and work on problem 4.3a. All right, we'll see you in class. Thank you, and uh, we'll, I hope you guys have a good evening or day. Bye.